5 kilos of my own made super strength hummus. I've been stuck at home recently so I've been doing an awful lot of cooking and I've been musing on the fact that some people don't do this and it's brought home to me recently by the, the shock horror national crisis of the hummus shortage that such a substandard easy to make product should be not available anyway is a bit of a weird idea to me. So I thought what I'd do in this little video I'd show you how to make what I think is one of the best and simplest foods you can possibly live on, particularly if you're, you're a vegan. Hummus is made from chickpeas mostly. I get my chickpeas dried. You soak them for 12 to 15 hours before you want to start making it and they double in size so they go from these little tiny balls into big fluffy balls and they then have to be cooked and it takes quite a while to cook chickpeas uh, using an ordinary saucepan that's because they're quite hard so I, what I like to use is a pressure cooker now pressure cookers for most people are a bit of a, a grey area they work like this that if you put water in a saucepan and boil it, once it gets to 100 degrees the temperature doesn't get any higher. If you turn the burner up it just boils more intensely which is just wasting energy. So the idea of a pressure cooker is that by putting a lid on the pressure rises and as the pressure rises the boiling point rises. My big six litre pressure cooker when it boils at 12 pounds per square inch it's boiling at 115 to 117 degrees and the hotter temperature cooks the food more quickly and so in half the time using the same burner it's using half the energy so it's more efficient. So I put my chickpeas on to boil, it takes about an hour, come up to temperature and hiss away and in the meantime using that hour I'm going to prepare all the other ingredients to make my hummus. We start with the garlic. Now one of the things I really believe is that cooking is a way to express a way of life and I love garlic and preparing garlic is a, a tactile process and you could use a food processor for this do it really really quickly but it's far more fun and meditative and therapeutic to do it all by hand and most of this process apart from the pressure cooker is going to be done by hand and so you get the big bulbs, big bulbs easier to peel, break them up, get all the little cloves and then you have to peel each one individually which takes a little while until you end up with a big heap of garlic cloves. This is a very big knife I'm using and if you want to do a good job you need the right tools. Knives like this everybody looks at the sharp edge and they have quite a nice sharp edge but there's that big flat edge on the other side and that's deliberate because that big flat edge is ideal for crushing and by crushing the garlic we squeeze out more of the juices and the oils and that flavour can then go into our food and it's quite a slow process and you can listen to the radio you can listen to music it's what it is it's not meant to be a chore it's meant to be a relaxing therapeutic hour or two spent making some hummus which will last you perhaps a month or two if you freeze it like I do. It is a bit noisy. As to be said, it is a bit noisy. So here we are. Here's our roughly 400 grams of garlic if you are buying shop if you want it like it is in the shop you'd want about 150 or 200 300 minimum I would use I, I like my garlic strong so now let's make some lemon juice when you buy lemons they're sort of old but they're not ripe so I like to keep my lemons for a week they become more soft and more juicy and, and much better flavour and you start by just chopping them all up into halves. Um, you could use a lemon squeezer, 
but I far prefer to use my fingers. Uh, again, tactile, really therapeutic process. You give it a squeeze and you form your fingers into a little point and use it as if it were a lemon squeezer. And it's actually quite quick and it, it does save on the washing up somewhat. So what we end up with is this big jug of lemon juice which we strain because the pips aren't digestible so you wouldn't want to eat those. And there you are, a half a litre of lemon juice. Of course if you wanted to buy the lemon juice you could but let bought lemon juice is usually pasteurised, it's not as nutritional uh, a, a benefit as, as actual lemons. So we've been leaving our chickpeas to cook. When they come out of the pressure cooker, uh, when it's under pressure, they're still really hot. So we cool the pressure cooker lid with cold water as, a, as the pressure cooker comes off the boil. Take the lid off and you can see it's still boiling under its own heat. So good idea, drain them and rinse them in cold water. This not only takes them off the boil so you don't burn yourself, um, but you also don't boil off the important garlic oils. I like to use a hand masher. You could use a, a, a liquidizer, but it would have to be a big industrial strength one for this job. So actually again, a hand masher, cheap, easy, very therapeutic. Now we start mixing everything together. Now I've just given it a very rough mashing in order to burst the, the chickpeas. Now I'm adding the, the garlic and the lemon juice and the oil and all that goes in and again I don't give it a really heavy mash but just enough to mix it all together. So now we start mashing in earnest. The lemon juice is liquid, it helps thin it down. But the really difficult step is the tahini. Tahini is very thick, it's very oily, it's not going to want to mix with your wet chickpeas. At the moment I'm using tahini from jars, not ideal, I would prefer to get the, the free kilo big packs, if only because it saves an awful lot of wastage and it's slightly cheaper. This is whole tahini, that's the whole seed ground up. Much better for you, has about three times the amount of calcium in. There's more calcium in this weight for weight than dairy products. I'm adding a little bit of warm water, not boiling, just warm water. And I'll add about half a litre by the time I get to the end. If you want the shop bought stuff, then I call that emulsion paint. You need to add a litre to at least two litres to get it that runny. Uh, but I like my hummus quite thick. This is about five minutes of mashing. Uh, produces a lovely, even, I like to call it crunchy texture. Because there's still a lot of lumps in there. It's not like the shop bought stuff, which is, which is a puree. There's, there's no texture to it at all. I make my hummus about once a month. Uh, you can't keep a big container of hummus in the fridge for a month, it will go off. So what I do, I have all these small containers and I decant the hummus into the container uh, and freeze them all. First of all, I allow them to air cool to room temperature, then I put them in the fridge and they cool to fridge temperature, and then I put them in the freezer. And the reason for doing that is it uses less energy to cool them because they're mostly passively cooling. If you put them straight into the freezer, very bad idea. The fridge will use an awful lot of energy to cool them down. So I fill up all the containers one by one. They get frozen. And then when I want a, a pot of hummus, I take it out of the fridge, allow it to stand on the table for 
for two or three hours to let it defrost on its own and then it's, it's usable last little bits taken out and I like to make mine in five kilo batches purely because it's a trade-off between effort and time it's a couple of hours once a month not a big chore and it's actually quite a nice time off and we don't have enough time off in our lives we're, we're so busy in this modern consumer society doing we don't have enough time being and for me hummus is a therapy it's a way of being of getting in touch with your food and really enjoying it So here's a list of ingredients. Uh, these are shop-bought prices, superstore prices. If you were to run a whole food co-op, you could buy in bulk, get them a lot cheaper. Also, the price of the tahini is very high again because I'm not able to get the, the big three kilo tubs at the moment, but that would make it a lot cheaper. And here we are, five kilos of homemade super strength hummus. Now, of course, the last chore, eat the hummus. And I have to say, this is the best part of the whole gig. I always start with the saucepan, don't wash it up, there's an awful lot of hummus in there, get a piece of bread and scrape away at that container and really enjoy the first bit of your month to come of lovely homemade hummus.